writing is first and foremost something that I do for myself. It calms me, it soothes me, it helps me make sense of the world. It has also given me a way to make a living, um, to get my views and thoughts out there. Me, Ant-Man and our mongrel flea bag like partying outside. We both come from the bush. Me, I'm a New South Wales desert girl and Ant-Man's mob are river people. Because we ain't got no river or desert here in the city, we like sitting in the park, yarning, having a charge, playing country music. We don't cause no harm. Try telling that to the coppers. As soon as they see us, they start growling. They say, no drinking here, no music, and get that dog registered. Using um, colloquial Aboriginal language, well, in particular my mob's language, wasn't actually a conscious choice on my part. It was, ju it just was how the characters came to me in my head. Humour is everything in, in, in an Aboriginal society, across the board. It, it, it's part and parcel of who we are and it, it um, I think it disappoints a lot of us um, that people don't realise what a funny mob we are. You know, no matter where you go, if you sit around with blackfellas, you're going to wind up laughing. We pull up at this deadly park right on the harbour. Ant-Man and me are a bit nervous, but flea bags out of the car and belt and cross the grass like there's no tomorrow. There's heaps of other dogs there, but that's OK because he got his nuts cut out a couple of years ago, so we don't go bluing no more. We get the stuff out of the car, spread the blanket with the tucker glasses and wine on the grass and sit down, still nervous. Then we see all these white fellas. They're all sitting around with wine, beer and tucker too. I didn't write it with any real particular audience in mind. I mean, I wrote it, I wrote it for Australian people to read. I wrote it for my own people, my own mob, the Nyampa. I wrote it for other Aboriginal people so that they could see themselves in it. But basically, I, I think that, I mean, there are lots of different layers to the book and you can read it on a superficial level or you can go deeper. It's up to you. I mean, I, I, I think, like most writers, once you've written something, you know, what is it, the, the, the moving pen having written moves on. They're having a laugh. Kids and dogs are running around. There's no trains. The harbour's shining. Boats everywhere. We pour drinks, make sandwiches. People smile at us. They pat old Flea and fuss over his fancy collar. He laps it up and there's no coppers in sight. Ant-Man grins. Makes you want to sing, eh, Titter? Sure does, I say and whack old Slim on the CD player. People don't seem to understand just what Black Lives Matter actually means. They keep coming up with all lives matter. And I keep trying to tell them that's what it's all about. At the moment, all lives don't matter because black lives don't matter. If a white person gets in their car and a, and a, and a cop's behind them, you know, they could be thinking, oh, geez, you know, what have I done? You know, I'm sure the car's registered. But a black person is thinking, am I going to get home alive? Am I going to walk through my front door or, or am, I going to, am I going to leave this, this spot in a body bag? And that's the reality of it. Aboroglyphs, dendroglyphs. These are the scientific words the white man uses to describe our tree writing, the sophisticated hieroglyphics of an ancient culture, an ancient civilization. These are the words used to describe the arboreal classrooms on which our ceremonies and laws were writ large, the sweat and blood of the carvers impregnating the DNA of our people into the limbs of the sapwood and heartwood that lined the pathways of learning for the young warriors and their teachers. Did giving them these cold, hard words 
calling them the tree carvings of a primitive people, make it easier for the scientist, the anthropologist, the land coveter to rip them from their belonging place, to destroy the warriors' classrooms or desecrate the graves of our lost ancestors. I don't talk very much about spiritual beliefs, um, but I do feel somehow that we're guided by by the spirits of our ancestors. The, the atoms and the DNA and everything we leave around goes to build the rocks and the earth and, and it, you know, in the air around us. And I feel very much connected to my ancestors. And I feel, I know I get cold shivers whenever I go out to Ivanhoe and whenever I'm on the red dirt. And do we mob the ancestors of the carvers, the teachers, the initiated, take comfort from the return of our trees or from the revelation of our lost and forgotten ceremony or from the photos in black and white and faded sepia of a world and a ways now gone? Do we celebrate? Do we own our anger or do we forgive? Or do we let the tears fall where they may? Outlandish Arts animated logo, copyright 2020, Outlandish Arts.